All right, here we go. Faculty in focus for our architecture and interior design programs here at Canadian University Dubai. Um, my name is Greta. I'm sitting here at our CityWalk campus. I'm a student enrollment advisor. And uh, today I've got a few special guests with us. Um, first, my, my coworker, Maya, who is also a student enrollment advisor. Hey, Maya. Hello. <laughs> um, we have a current student named Gada. She's studying architecture and interior design. <laughs> hey, Greta, it's interior design. <laughs> Very cool. Awesome. Yeah. And of course, our professor, Dr. Saith. Dr. Saith, how are you? I'm good. Uh, thank you for joining me or for, you know, for me to join you awesome. this uh, lovely evening. Yes, thank you so much for um, doing this for us. We're very excited to learn more about the architecture and interior design programs that the university offers. Um, so I do have some questions for both of you, if you're okay with that. Cool. Dr. Saif, I was wondering, do you think of yourself more as a professor or as an architect? Ah, well, that's a tough question. You should have told me this before. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, um, it's it's it, in 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 some countries like in the U.S. We are talking about the uh, most uh, most of the architects can uh, do both. In the sense that you are teaching and you are working at the same time. Uh, here in the country, it's difficult. So basically, you can only do one thing. Uh, so now that's the existing situation. Uh, now, uh, an architect is always an architect. Uh, the, the, when you are teaching, you uh, you you kind of the the, the practicalities. Uh, or the practical aspect of the profession get to be sent to the back door in a way. And uh, so when you teach, you are trying to open up imaginations. You are trying to do things that in practice, sometimes you can't because you are cutting corners. You are trying just to, to make it work. Uh, uh, you know, price is a big issue. Uh, deadline is a big issue uh, and so on. But in, when you are teaching, you are you have this leverage. Uh, yes, you look at practical at the function and you want to be practical, but you can dream more. Uh, you, you can let it lose more. Uh, so at the end of the day, uh, because you are in a profession where you are teaching, uh, that becomes uh, probably uh, more uh, in the sense that the pedagogy of delivering the material for students to understand it, because, you know, people from the practice, they don't make good engineers or good architects, uh, uh, good teachers in, 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 you know, you could understand and do things well, but when you have students around you, you cannot deliver, you cannot give what you know. Right. Uh, and so the more time you spend in um, teaching, uh, you become more into this educational aspect of things. Um, it's not like you cannot do practice or you cannot do project. You can, uh, and uh, some of us get involved uh, with others, but it's just, you do, you know, you, you are not uh, uh, the, 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 the bureaucracy or the, the, the you know, the, the, the requirements that are out there because to build something, there are a lot of requirements. Awesome. That was such a great answer. Thank you so much. Yeah. I was so curious because you know, as an architect, you're like an engineer and also an artist. And um, that's just such a cool thing. And then going to perf like teaching, I just don't understand how that would work. But thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, remember, <laughs> uh, we are uh, really in a profession where uh, we also learn from the students. And so it's not really as you think, it's always monotonous kind of life cycle. Um, you, you, we get surprised from class to class, from year to year, uh, but the, the different students that in a classroom could change the way for you to get more excited or you know more focusing in one aspect versus the other. And this is kind of also interesting because of uh, the students. So it's it's, you know, it, it, it's open, you know, yeah, <laughs> we yeah. are all learning as we go. That's so cool. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, I have a question for you as well, if you're open to it. Sure. So how has learning about interior design changed the way that you see the world around you and maybe in particular even Dubai? Like it's it's such an interesting city architecturally and in, in terms of interior design as well. How has your viewpoint it, changed? Well, it actually opens like your mind to ideas and design because whenever you go in Dubai, all around you, even Abu Dhabi, when you see all the buildings and how they look like, it's like architecture and interior design is uh, a very wide, uh, like um, major. You can uh, a lot of designs, uh, a lot of uh, uh, concepts. Uh, so it's never ending learning, actually. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kaba. Uh, Dr. Saif has done us the honor of uh, putting together a sort of presentation to uh, elaborate more on the programs that we offer here. Um, so, Dr. Saif, would you mind sharing your screen for us? I will. Uh, and uh, thank you, uh, Rita. That was a pleasure. Uh, the, the question, the first question was excellent, and uh, I hope the uh, students uh, will uh, like it. Uh, yeah. Let's get started here. Uh, in the meantime, for those of us who are joining us, feel free to type any questions that you have in the Q&A box down below, um, and we'll address them as best we can. Okay, uh, welcome to my dear guests, uh, the students and their parents. Uh, if some have parents next to them, that's you are all welcome. I, uh, my name is Dr. Uh, my name is Saif, uh, Dr. Saif Kiati. Um, I will be your host in a sense that I will be doing this short presentation and uh, please feel free to uh, write your questions and uh, ask your question at the end. Um, I don't know specifically about your concerns or questions. So this presentation is trying to cover different aspects. I will start with uh, the agenda or what we will try to cover tonight. And so um, I will talk a little bit or touch the studying uh, from how different is uh, studying in high school, where you are, which most of you are coming from, versus studying at universities. Um, and we'll, I'll also cover uh, studying architecture in particular. And when we talk about programs uh, that we have, they are four to five years. So we are going to talk about how you are going to spend those four to five years. And we will also cover the services that you have to succeed, to, 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 to basically excel and do good uh, in terms of moving through the program, in terms of getting good grade, uh, good grades and so on. And one of the last uh, items that we'll cover will be why COD program? Why would you choose this university and uh, these programs that we have interior design and architecture, and um, and in general, we'll conclude also about this degree that you will get. What are areas where you can work? So, what are you know areas uh, that are in five years or from years from here down the road for you? Okay, uh, so let's get started here, and these are kind of differences or uh, things that happen at the university level that most of you, I, I'm telling you this because you are coming from high school and I'm sure you know high school very well. Uh, but what you are getting into is kind of different. Um, there are similar items, but the things that are different for most of you is you have to be in charge of yourself, you know, because it's not as structured. It is a new environment. You have to find a way to get to the city, to drive, to 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 try to commute, uh, and where to eat, uh, how to to register, and and so on. Um, and dependent and dependent learning. Uh, this is really different than high school. Basically, you can study for two hours in a classroom, and then you have to read a book outside the classroom and work several hours for those two hours. And so this is, you know, uh, important. Also, uh, one of the items is the fact that we have a lot of uh, free time between classes. You cannot have class back to back every day. 
you have classes once sometimes one in the morning in the afternoon and most students they kind of do nothing and it's bad habit so if you organize yourself you things get easy for you and uh, also universities the first week you are basically give, given the program for each class so you know the test the project and the deadlines will come back to this more later and then also in at the university especially if you have two campuses uh, or you have a big uh, campus you find yourself moving between classes and going outside the building to another and and so on so i just wanted to touch this just to give you an idea about what how things are happening or will happen for you at the university um now universities there are a lot of uh, activities that should broaden your horizons and believe me these are good things to have because they will make you more rounded person so um, in terms of clubs for example at cud and this is based on last year we have a student government so basically as a student you can get involved in politics in the sense you can get elected and then you can do things for the older students and i just want to open a parenthesis here uh, Two years ago, I was in a meeting uh, and the president of the university said to the first student government that he will send them to Canada. As a, you know, as a government body, so they can see how other universities do things and that, that was really great. Uh, uh, and then we also have a in the club, which is the MUN, the model of United Nations. And this is really interesting because you can participate, you can, uh, uh, you know, defend uh, and understand case. Uh, you know, uh, this is about a lot of disciplines that we teach and also what makes us humans that are involved in this uh, MUN. I invite you to, 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 to join, obviously. We have robotics. This is really cool. You can make the small robots and, uh, you know, with other students and you can, uh, you know, some geese will, you know, program and you can do things, you know, move this, uh, you know, these robots walk, fly, whatever. We also have a drama club, a music club, and a dance club. And if you don't see anyone here that you like, you can get started, you know, you can, have we can have a green club heritage club a tourism club a usa club who knows you know you can just you know uh volunteer we also have uh, sports facilities uh we do have football training basketball training volleyball uh, tennis and we have clubs uh teams i meant and we also have a uh, volley basketball court and uh, several uh, tennis courts um we have games areas in the inside the building um also, we have a lot of university and school events. These are uh, distinguished lectures or uh, people visiting from abroad or uh, now with the pandemic webinar from abroad. Um, we also have our students uh, with the students affairs department organize events such as autism awareness, breast cancer and others that you might be interested to participate in. But one of the things that I can talk about myself here this is the place where you are going to make your lasting friendship this is you know we all went through high school through medium school through primary school from king kg the more it gets further from you you less track so here you are just before you get married just before you start working this is the time where friendship is going to be really valuable and so the place where you meet those it, it helps when you have common targets planning to all go to Canada, planning all to do something together or studying something. So this is important. Um, now, when we talk about the programs that we have, we have three programs. And if you see them here, it's like three blocks. What is the difference? Why we have three? Well, we have two programs in architecture, two bachelors in architecture and one in interior design. So the two programs in architecture, the one that we have so far is the bachelor of architecture is five years long it is a professional degree that means in uae you get it you start working okay uh starting this year we have a new bachelor it's four years and it's called bachelor of science in architectural studies now this bachelor because it's four years it was meant that if 
for you to practice architecture, you have to go for a master afterwards. Right? So you will do four plus two years in master. Okay. Um, and then we have uh, the Bachelor of uh, Science in Interior Design. It is four year program. Uh, special note here, all these programs, they share the first year and a half. So everything is the same for one year and a half. So it is an added value benefit for students if they decide to change between programs. This is really something unique to us. I mean, other universities, might, they might have it in two programs, but you have it in three programs. OK. Now let's talk a little bit about architecture. Why are architecture different? I mean, most of you are going to have coming from high school. Some want to study politics. Some want to, to become musicians. Some want to, to do uh, business, uh, engineering and so on. So what is unique about architecture? Well, uh, architecture usually is to dream about something. Dream, you have an idea about a something that you want to create. And we are talking about buildings. Uh, obviously, we are also talking about interior designers. So we are talking about piece of furniture. We are talking about a uh, display. We are talking about an organization of space. But that those things do not exist. So you want you are dreaming. You are trying to think about how you create those. When you have an idea, which we call concept, from this dream, then you are going to start designing it. So you are going to design it so that it works, you do the details for it, and then those the, the designs that you do, then they can be built. So this is in general the process. So from an idea to a design to a building, right? Now, our programs here, they were built around this. And if you look to the right, all the courses that we have in the studios and what have you, they all are built with this idea that we need to help you think. We also help you to create things that you dreamed of, that you thought about, right? And then we will help you make those. But then you need to be able to represent those ideas because if you don't, nobody can understand them from you. They cannot be built. And then the last thing is probably also very important is all of this that you learn with respect to the environment, to society, to the individuals, to yourself, because you need to have a comfort, right? So whatever we do things, we want people to move on. Um, and I don't want this page too long. This is those ideas as in terms of formulated how they go into what we call the each class and you know, the CLOs, you know, the, uh, you know the, the objectives of each class. So we give you creative and analytical skills, economic and social values, construction and legal environment, professional and ethic values, uh, fundamentals of design and architecture, interior design, graphic and oral communication, building systems, code, technology, materials, sensitivity towards ecology and the environment, and obviously software skills these days. I try to go as fast as I can. Okay. Now, because what we have said so far is just to set up the foundation for this, uh, the environment of uh, what we call architecture and interior design. Now, based on students that went through this field, myself included here, you need to be prepared, you need to be organized because there is hard work. Hard work in terms of you, you see the images around you is it's a lot of fun. If you love it, it's great because you can you see the image at the bottom, for example, how many um, the, the, the student who is working here, how many uh, trash of paper on his desk. Those are where ideas or sketches that he didn't like probably um, and uh, but you can see how the, the students, they are helping each other, how they are around the table discussing uh, projects. So you, you are going to cut, you are going to uh, glue, you are going to, to, to you know, to, 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 to draw and, and so on. And to be able to, to, for your work to progress, you need to be organized. And this is where we talk about studio culture. This is unique to design. The, the studio is the place where other students are going to come 
and you are going to spend nine hours per week officially, but it gets more. And this is where basically you, you, you develop your creation, your Einstein creations, right? So this is where you do your beauties, not Einstein, forget about Einstein. This is where you create your, uh, you know, uh, your ideas into great things. And uh, it is really important. It's the heart of the architecture. Now, um, there are some nights where some students have said they will go all the way. We call them all nighters. They don't sleep. But be it, again, I went through this. Uh, but if you are organized, you don't have to, and you, you don't have to do this. Uh, the second word under all nighters is charrette. This is a French word, and usually you find yourself before some submitting or pinning your work spending more time to finish it up and to be able to uh, put it uh, to, to pin it okay now one thing is unique also to architecture is a lot of students sometimes especially early on they get upset when the uh, instructor or a friend is, or their parents is looking at their work and he give them a critique and sometimes they don't like what they hear and they freak out remember Nobody is talking about you. We are talking about the work in front of us. So you could, you, you know, you can you may, you can make an exciting product, but the shape is not right, or the the, the site, or the color, or the, the the function, or what have you. And so you need to be able to learn how to to deal with it. And the sooner you do, the better you will fly around, and you know you you will become happy with everybody. Um, I wanted to include these quick uh, examples. Because why we you work hard? Why we the, the, we push you? Because at the end of the day, this is not just a game; it's a reality. Uh, I wanted to show you this stadium that is exists today. This is the Husky Stadium at the University of Washington for their football team, and I was there in 1987, where the structure collapsed, and you can see somebody. Um, in 12 seconds, the building that they were putting together disappeared. Loss of uh, they lost time because they were expecting the season to start and to have this addition. Money, delays, and you know this is so. That's why we are trying to avoid these things and giving you a critique. We're trying to give you what you need to have. Uh, I have two other examples. Uh, one is from a award winning. This is like star architect, uh, Frank Gehry. So this building on the right that you see, uh, uh, sorry, on the left, it's in the middle. Uh, this structure is for MIT. So this is a research kind of building, right? Guess what? He did this building and a lot of people said, wow, cool. Look how it is. And, so, and then it went for courts and it became one of the nastiest lawsuits. And uh, it was settled out of the court some time ago, but you know it's just because the the client who liked it end up fixing it every year. Each year you have leak in the water here. The structure is collapsing somewhere, and and, and so on. Um, and then the image on the right is a building in China that was built, and because before finishing the the, the project, it felt. You look at it, it's oh my god, this is looks like like a toy. You know, the whole building, this is, it's not an earthquake. It happened at 540 on June 27, 2009. And guess what? They didn't uh, probably uh, read well the soil quality. They didn't do the right foundations. Uh, so architecture at the end of the day, it's a lot of fun, but it's serious. Okay. Uh, now, what do we offer for people to have a good education and end up doing well? Well, we start with a study plan, sound study plan. Professionals have sat down. They have made the program. They, they know what should be there. And we want students to move from the first semester to the last semester in a certain order. So some courses are prerequisite to others. That means that the students, you start with basic math, for example, basic design, why? Because it's you need to know how to handle the, the, the pencil before you move on, right? In your 
and sometimes students they, they want to 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 break the, the, the to take the detours you know they want to, to to cut to take cutways and they end up missing some key courses uh, so it is very important that students look at their study plans it is also important that the university is printing a booklet with all course descriptions you know so all the courses are there with their descriptions spend time understand what the course is about especially if it is an elective so that you choose if it fits within your uh, you know what you want to do or not uh, also uh, registering for courses this is not like in primary school or in high school where automatically you pay the tuition up, uh, at the beginning of the school and they tell you what you do for a whole year here not every student is responsible for registering and therefore because the, the when you start you are all the same but then some people get delayed because they cannot take six courses they take less some people uh, don't do well in math or in design or in marketing or what have you and they end up being behind and so on and also remember from the faculty you have advisors and i will come back later in a few minutes so it is very important that you take a picture note of the office hours of the faculties who are teaching you and who are advising you because they are a resource for you instead of you turning around go to them right and go to them when they are around office hours right now we have a team with 200 years of collective experiences so now you have the, you are looking at the faces most of them the majority have phds they all are from north america from britain from australia uh, they have years of teaching experiences and work experiences and this is the at the moment the faculty that they will be teaching you if you join cud now in the program when you join in Obviously, we have services that are unique to us, and these uh, services, we have scholarships, obviously, for um, uh, students with good records, uh, also with other qualities. We've actually got five different types of scholarships that we offer. Uh, we've got Excellent. academic, athletic, special talent, special need, and financial hardship. Very good. Thank you so much. Yes, this, this is this is important. Be, of course, yeah. those can <laughs> Thank all you. be applied for um, once you've been admitted into the university. Excellent. Very good. Uh, you hear you hear her, and she said it. She's there to help you, right? And then we also have academic tutoring sessions on how to use certain softwares, how to do certain things, and these are free. And uh, uh, sometimes you can request them from your within your departments, but you'll see ads. Uh, we also have like for us, we have placement tests. So before you take you become a kamikaze taking like, for example, a lot of students and I'm just. Giving the example of math. A lot of students are, you know, always saying, well, math, how hard it is, especially for architecture and so on. Guess what? We offer a placement test. That means you can go. Take the test in few minutes and at the end of the test, they will tell you. You can register in the math course or. You need to take a class. Guess what? That class is free and it's called the pre math. So basically they keep you up. They boost your level so that when you take the math class. You pass it. Instead of you trying to do it without what it takes to have, right? Uh, we offer counseling. And when you say counseling, we are talking about social worker, we are talking psychology here, right? At the university level, depending of uh, each case. And this is where we come in, the educators, we have academic advisors. So, and these academic advisors, they help you move through the program and they are a resource to you. Uh, obviously, we mentioned the study plan that is important. It shows what you should each student should take every semester. And we go back here. The most important thing that each one of you will have is the syllabus for the class or the project brief for a design project. Why? Because the first day of the semester, it tells you how many assignments you have, when they are due, and 
this is really cool. Um, now, how things, how do we teach our courses? Well, we have three systems. We have studios, we have labs, and we have regular classes. So classes are basically classes that could have 20 or more students and if somebody's teaching and explaining. But the studio, we mentioned it, you saw images before. So this is a place where you have a professor and you have 10 to 17, 18 students around. And basically he tells you what to do and he is, you are doing them, he's helping you and uh, you are showing them, uh, him or her, your work for both architecture or interior design. For the lab, here we are talking about environmental labs, we are talking about computer labs, so these are also some theory and some hands-on. So you, you more, you know, uh, uh, learning. Now, for, as far as how students are going to do this, well, we have individual and we have group projects, and some are research-based, some are hands-on based. Now, Go back to the importance of advisors. All new students are going to have their assign an advisor assigned to them. So this is cool. So when you register, they tell you search professor is basically. Remember, we call them advisors, but I want you to think about them more like coaches. You know, in sports, football, volleyball, basketball, you have coaches. They don't play, but they try to make the players win. And that's our job. So the advisor is there to help you win, pass, get good grades. Unfortunately, most of the students, they don't take this. They just do th things by themselves. It's a free resource. Um, we also, I have to open a, a note here that this is different than in your last year of graduation for interior design, that will be the fourth year for architecture, the fifth year, if we are talking about the five year program you will you have the choice of choosing an advisor for your graduation project so this is you choose that person he or her to do your final project but before you have an advisor to graduate with splash right and uh normally you should see your advisor whenever there is a need for it but at minimum i will see at least once a semester right now why should you or any student register at CUD? Well, we can talk about it for hours. I will say our programs are accredited by the Ministry of Higher Education. So you can jaw, you can work, you can go to and, and do more studies in the future. You, they, they are, you know, they are 100% accredited. Another thing that we are doing at the moment we are also working to get the North American uh, uh, accreditation. So we, it's in the process. Uh, another thing is that the fact that we have two, three, three programs to choose from, not one, but we have three. Um, we also have what we call a niche, the Canada connection or connections. That means some of our students left to Canada, they transferred, they started with us, and before finishing, they transferred to Canada. Some finished their program here and they transferred to Canada. Uh, not, it's not really a transfer because they finished their, uh, what we call, and their graduate degree here, and they moved for graduate uh, uh, degree. Our reputation in, the, in, 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 uh, in, the, in Dubai, uh, in UAE in general, uh, and now a little bit over time uh, international uh, with uh, uh, Canadian counterparts. Uh, the faculty that we have that I mentioned, uh, the location, you are, we are lo lo located right in a good, what we say downtown, we have the, um, probably you know already, I'm not going to talk about it, but we, uh, Jumeirah is not far, Dubai Mall is not far, the, the finest district center, if you have money, you know, it's not far. And we have a new campus. Um, that probably you have already uh, noticed around if you are driving or you have been to campus. Um, if you look at, uh, I am talking to you from the old campus today from my uh, office. I haven't moved yet, but uh, a lot of colleagues have done that already. And uh, so if we look at programs and if it's, uh, 
basically from each program, what can you do with degree from architecture or interior design? If you look at the, we have two columns on screen and the one on the right is interior design and on the left is both programs in architecture on the left. So from an architecture, you can work on architecture, you can work on space, as a space planner, you can work for as a consultant, you can do building code inspector, you can work as a BIM manager, as an urban designer in the municipality or an office, or as urban planner in the municipality or an office, landscape architect, interior design, uh, consultancy, sorry. Um, you can do sustainability consultant, uh, real estate, uh, construction, government, uh, facility management, you can, go for a graduate degree, you can do teaching, uh, and that will be uh, really similar to uh, interior design. Uh, in the interior design, you can do furniture, you can do theater, you can do lighting designers, you can you know, do a master or uh, obviously at the end, but you can also teach, you can be a facility manager, project manager, real estate, government office. But the one of the difference is you can also be an expert in lighting. Is. So you will become the person uh, uh, that is the expert on lighting. Uh, now, in terms of where do our graduates go? Well, like I said before, some have finished their degree here, and this is uh, the top left graduate studies. So some of them went to McGill, Western University in Canada, UBC, which is in uh, British Columbia, University of Calgary. And some of them went to Europe or the States. Um, most of our students do internship in UAE, uh, in particular in Dubai. And some of them have, uh, you know, the students has to be interested in a company and connect, contact that, contacting them and so on. But some have done at Perkins and Will, some at Diwan, some at Architects and Engineers and Planners, some at the municipality. Uh, some have uh, are working. And uh, they are working in architecture firms such as X Architects, Edge, and so on. And some have transferred to Canada before finishing their degree. Uh, some of them went to Dalhousie University and Lawrence Tech. Now, to register uh, in our program, there are some conditions or some certain criteria that you need to have. Uh, we need to have a high school with 12 years schooling. Uh, you need to have certain uh, subjects that should be covered uh, for in the core fields, math, science, languages, social sciences, and humanities. Um, we need to have a high school or equivalent uh, through the UAE uh, system, which is the Ministry of Higher Education or Education. And we need a minimum average of 70. Okay. Um, obviously, there are conditional admissions uh, that uh, I, mean, I will not cover here, but uh, my team is uh, more than capable of explaining details for those of you who are interested. So we have some uh, frequently asked questions. When can I join? Uh, what is the opportunity to go to Canada? And these are pretty much kind of uh, popular questions. That's why we have them here. Um, Will my degree be accredited? We said yes, so that should not be a problem. Um, uh, for English, well, we ask for TOEFL or IELTS, uh, then you can even take them at CUD. Um, and uh, if I am outside UAE, can I apply and join? Of course, we, we, we have a lot of international students. Um, can I work in Canada or finish in Canada? Of course. Uh, because some have already done it, and we have uh, a lot of relationship with uh, universities. The, the best thing is we have dedicated people on campus that can answer your questions. So this has to be prepared ahead of time. It's not like you decide today, you go tomorrow, right? You have to contact universities, you have to see the location that you like, the speciality, and, and so on, and it could be uh, prepared, and some have done it, so yes. Uh, I want to thank you all. Uh, for your patience, and uh, if you have questions, please, we are all here for you. Thank you. That was awesome. Thank you so much for the presentation, Dr. Say. It was You're actually welcome. very enlightening for me as a student enrollment advisor. 
Um, so I'm kind of the front lines for those of you watching. Um, I'm probably going to be your first point of contact uh, once you start the application process. Um, and speaking of which, the application process is quite simple. For most of you, we just need to see your high school transcripts from grades 10, 11, and 12, as well as a photocopy of your passport and your Emirates ID. Um, we also do require an IELTS or a TOEFL or an MSAT is okay. Um, just any English proficiency test is required for entry into the university. Um, Ms. Gada, I have so many questions for you because um, you have like the student perspective of being an interior design student. What was it like for you from the very beginning versus how it is now? So I actually entered um, architecture. I studied for three years. Then um, I started to like go to like uh, interior design more. I shifted more to interior design. So uh, our university actually helps to do that. It's not hard to go from architecture to interior design because the first two years we actually share uh, subjects together, which is very nice actually. So you take both perspectives. You don't just enter architecture, you just take architecture courses, no. So that really helped me to take um, ideas of both sides and made me decide exactly what I want to proceed. And uh, actually the first year, it was, um, it was a big change for me going from high school to uh, university and entering architecture. Uh, it wasn't hard, but it was um, like in architecture and interior design, it's all about projects. So um, people don't know that we have like deadlines or like uh, like uh, projects every like week to submit. So um, it's good to be prepared. Uh, just uh, time management is the best thing to do to uh, go through the first year and after the first year everything goes well excellent um so from a recruitment standpoint i get a lot of students who are artistically inclined and you know think maybe they could pursue architecture or interior design but both of those are bachelors of science would you say for the average person that these are particularly like mathematical or scientific like what most people would consider like very difficult subjects to study? Uh, no, actually, because uh, we give, uh, there is only like two subjects, three subjects that are related to math, which is calculus and structures in architecture. And interior design, it's only uh, calculus. And we have one course of physics. It's the basic knowledge to help us pursue these uh, major but it's not a more mathematical or more artistic. It's uh, both, you can say, but no one is required to be an artist to enter architecture or interior design. It's actually all about your, your uh, concepts and dreams and the imagination you have that you're implementing in this paper or your project itself. It's so fascinating that you started out in architecture and then switched to interior design. What was kind yeah. of the turning point for you? Um, I started to like more uh, designing as in colors, furniture, spacing. Uh, I didn't like to pursue more construction based uh, program. Uh, architecture is both. It's construction and designing. It's not only uh, construction, but uh, I like the fun of the interior design, how to put the couch there and the colors that look great together and the space, the experience for uh, the people you are building or doing this interior for. The experience is the best part, actually. Nice. This is kind of a question for both of you, but would you say that like there's more architecture in interior design or there's more interior design in architecture? They're actually both. Wow, I, where do you get your questions from? 
That's an excellent question. I'm just question. like, there's <laughs> just such a fascinating you know, field, you know. You know? Yeah. The, it's, the, 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 this question is really interesting because it's, it, it has been a debate. Uh, it's, it's a very solid question. Um, you know, uh, architecture cannot happen without interiors. Any building that you look at, for, yes, we have facades. Well, yes, we have a shape, but it's the experience yes. to go through the building, to live in the building that, that really kind of make it more interesting or as much interesting, uh, I would say. Now, uh, one thing we have to, uh, to, to say here, the reason these two fields will go for a long time around us is most of us as humans, anywhere in the world, we spend 90% of our time inside shelters. We are either inside the building, hospital, mall, university, home, restaurant, coffee, you know, or we are through, inside a car, a plane, a train, a boat. And those are also done by interior designers. So if it is not an architect, it's an interior design who is doing the interior of that structure or shelter that, or you know, uh, that is moving. And so uh, it is uh, the, the, the difference between the two is really the commitment in, ter in terms of time when you study and the intensity and also after you study. Um, you know, most people who want a relaxed life after they graduate because they want to have families, they want, Probably interior design is more relaxing in the sense that you can you can take a project, you can work for, for the company from the office, you can also work as a contractor or subcontractor, so you, the amount of responsibility get lower, and you could be, for example, taking a mall but only work on uh, working in a shop that is going to open. Uh, you know, it's a, a flower shop, it's uh, whatever the topic it is, and you are just working on that. Um, specifically, or you can even be more specific. You are only doing the lighting. You are only doing the furniture or the 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 the, the, the painting or what the, the decoring or whatever. Uh, architecture is more like exterior and interior together, and the, the ability to understand that whatever functions you are going to have in that structure, they are ultimately linked to the shape, to the form. Um, and so I will say, usually it's because of its nature, it's more and more responsibility, uh, more, uh, um, I think she, she put it together nicely, more technical aspects that are associated with it. Uh, again, architecture is not 100% technical. Remember, we said we are making buildings for a society. We have to communicate with these people. We have to understand how they live, their culture, the, 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 the way they use the space. Um, uh, that, there is no map there. But we need to understand the geography of the place, the topography uh, of, the, the, of the site, uh, the, 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 the comfort. Uh, it's too hot, too cold. Uh, this little bit of engineering, uh, but not much. Uh, we need to design. That's an artistic part how you can uh, you know get the sun in a cool way you know a good shape and and, and so on the, the technical aspect really is how you make your build your building stand and not fall and uh, so you have to start the right way you always have engineers when you graduate to to do the, the calculations for you but but you need to have at least you can get started by doing the right things right uh, we, you need also to know to do the right detailing. You don't want to tell them do this, and the, when they do it, for example, you start having water leaks in the buildings and so on. For example, and so uh, and also uh, so little bit of structure, little bit of environmental. This is where the math is. The rest is really, uh, I will say, more uh, artistic. Uh, Rada, anything you want so to add? add on? Yeah. yeah, so add on. Actually, I met a lot of new students uh, around campus. Uh, everyone thinks that uh, it's more technical or mathematical. That's why they're scared to enter architecture. So it's actually like Dr. Safe said, it's not 
all technical. It's also designing and creating an experience. Uh, and uh, here I just want to go back to the presentation and something that really, uh, because we see it every year. Most of the students have a problem for two reasons. And I'm not saying that everybody is having problems. Uh, a lot of students in architecture do perform beautifully. They are very well, they finish on time, they get high marks uh, because they are more ready to, to, to adulthood, to be responsible than others. This is the key thing. Uh, uh, one thing that I have noticed, students come from high school as a bunch, you know, group of students, and they register in different programs. And because they came from high school, they have tendency the first year to hang around together. There is nothing bad about it, it's great. Now, the scheduling for people who are studying, let's say business versus architecture is different. You have deadlines in architecture. You have, when you need time, you need to think. And then when you have an idea, you have to you make it a reality and then you have to present it. So it takes time. Versus somebody who is sitting in a class, just uh, memorizing things and leaving. So it's, I'm not saying business is not bad, is bad or other fields. What I'm saying is th it's like medicine. We all know that medicine to study medicine, it's hard. It takes time. It takes a lot of energy. Well, architecture is the same. It, it does take. Time, but. There is not a lot of memorization like medicine. There is more artistic part. Okay, so the key here, if you organize your time, you will be fine. And, you know, this is the, it's, it's really controlling your time and, you know, some catch up and do it well, and some will never do. Uh, and, uh, but in general, uh, this element uh, that we are discussing or this issue here, uh, let's not generalize it over the, the edges. I mean, it is, it is important. It's, it represents probably 20%, you know, it's not 100%. So the majority of students do well. They could do much better, of course, but that's the situation. Well, you raise a good point there. And I think it's important for all the incoming students to start out strong and um, gain that momentum and just stay on top of the ball, so to speak. If you come in under, then you're just gonna, it's gonna get harder and harder to go back up. But if you come out, come in strong, it's gonna be a lot easier to stay up there. So and, uh, thank focused. you. And that's also, it's very important from the beginning, even if you have a situation, I mean, not you, but the, the students, any, any student who have a situation where there is not electricity in his studio, in his class, uh, he has uh, some personal issue, don't stay until the end of the semester because if you don't go to class, if you don't submit, and that's true for any class, not just architecture, right? So this is why the advising is really important. This is, there is somebody who is willing to help you, she or he. Knock the door, go for it. Yeah, to add about the advisor, uh, a lot of students until now, they don't know what is an advisor and they don't, yeah, they don't know, like, what is the benefit of having an advisor? Uh, I really um, uh, advise everyone to talk to their advisor at least once every month uh, about their courses, if they're facing any problems, they're here to help us, all of us, to make it a better experience. And so we can go through this uh, five year, four year course smoothly. Absolutely. And all of our staff and faculty members here are clearly super approachable. I know it seems really intimidating at first uh, coming out of high school and suddenly you're, you're kind of with the big dogs now and you're with these professors with PhDs, you know. Um, but as you can see, Dr. Safe here is very friendly, really excited about what he does. Um, and most of all is really here to help you. That is the primary focus of our faculty here. It's to help you succeed. We're not trying to fail you. <laughs> We're trying to get you through the system so that you end up becoming a member of society that is our next architect, you know? Um, so as uncomfortable as it is, you gotta muster up the courage and just do it.
Very good. And by the way, and this is uh, the, and this is the North American approach into teaching. <laughs> uh, just you know, when when we said we are a North American, uh, we are Canadian. We we are you know we try to get the accreditation from there. We, and so the, the teaching methodology does follow that part. I mean, the student here, we are here, we are not doing going to do the work for the student. We are here to, to make the student do the work, but we have to give them the right environment, the right tools, the right material, the right uh, coaching um, until they can do the work by themselves. Very good, exactly. As long as you're interested in what you do, um, everybody's going to be really excited to, to foster that knowledge and support you. So, are okay. there any other things that we should mention before we wrap this thing up? Well, if the uh, students, uh, this is uh, my advice because I had, uh, I, I don't know about Rada here before she started, but all of us, when we are uh, coming from high school, we have to make two important decisions, two. The first one is, what do you want to study? This is very important uh, because most of the students, they might, sometimes they have two, three areas. You know, I want to do architecture. I want to do movie making. I want to become a doctor. I, and you know, it's, it's, it, it, go, it varies from case to phase, uh, case. Uh, so that's important. Two. Where do you want to study at? And, and these are two very important decisions that you make in your life, especially at this stage. This is probably the biggest. Uh, so it is very good. Uh, it is very important that you sit down. Think about it seriously. Uh, if you have questions because you are undecided about the fields, then we can also help you. You can visit because you cannot make a decision by yourself. Obviously, you can go online and search, and that's good also, but you can walk in uh, university and see the work of other students. You can ask to talk to some of the faculties teaching these areas, and they will help you make the right decision. And now, uh, the question that is trickier than this is, where do you want to study? And this is also important. Um, it all depends what do you want to learn now, what is the type of degree you wanted now and what you want to do afterwards? Again, think about what the, the questions that are troubling you or your concerns, bring them to us. Um, we can only help because we can. If we don't know what you, the, your questions or concerns, we can't really help you. And this will really save time. I have seen students coming uh not only in architecture or interior design but going to other fields and then dropping a year later or two years later or changing this was waste of time and money and energy and so on so let's let's you uh make the right decision you know talk to the right people good luck absolutely use use all the resources that are available to you we all have different life experiences and we're happy to share them with you um, not here to impose our own beliefs upon you or, our, you know, our choices, but um, take everything with a grain of salt. We just want you guys to succeed. So with that, I think we should wrap things up here. This has been a fantastic faculty in focus. Thank you so much, uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Saif and Gada. This has been so much fun. Um, and you, for Lisa. all of you guys watching and those of you who joined us, thank you so much. Um, we're always here at the university, always happy to help you with any sort of career counseling advice you would like, yeah. applications, etc. And by the way, Greta, uh, my uh, email is still on screen. Uh, so uh, any student can still send an email if they have any concern, question, um, you know, I would love to, to, to respond to them or, uh, uh, you know, meet with them. Um, so take snapshot of the uh, email address. And you can get started. Very good. There's nothing better than an approachable professor. Thank you so much, you guys. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank Have you a great so much. Rest of your Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye to all bye. of you. Thank bye. you. Bye-bye.